Okay, so the next topic here is standard forms of first order and second order transfer functions. Now you've already seen the standard form of a first order process. It looks like this. And we've actually already seen the Laplace transform of that. And then when you solve for capital Y of S and relate that to U of S, you'll get your transfer function. Now remember that you've already seen this transfer function as well. It's on page, well, it's on the example that starts on page 5-1. Okay, and so here's your transfer function for this first order process. So we've seen that already. And I kind of already um, mentioned that, oops, a little bit when I was talking about if I had put this guy into standard form here, you have this Kp over tau p s plus 1. Now, for second order processes, you also have a standard form, and you've seen this a few days ago, <clears throat> where your standard form is you have your tau n, or your natural period, times uh, your second derivative in, in time, plus 2 times zeta times tau n, zeta is your damping factor, remember, times your first derivative, plus your function itself, y, equals to kp times your input, u of t. So this is your uh, first order, or sorry, your second order process standard form. Now we can take the Laplace transform of this and relate then u of t to y, sorry, u of s to y of s, and that will give us our transfer function for this second order process. I won't go through the steps here, but what that means is that your transfer function for the process, for your second order process, is equal to kp all divided by tau n squared s squared plus 2 times zeta times tau n s plus 1. And by the way, I think I've just had a, a few mistakes in my notes. This guy here should be tau n squared. Okay, so from before, uh, so now that we have it in uh, second order, uh, standard form, the transfer function in standard form, uh, we're going to look again at this damping factor and see, you know, w what it means, what I told you earlier, uh, that the dampen damping factor is the thing that determines all, basically all the dynamic behavior of your steady state. To give you a feel for this, remember that what we're interested in when we want to look at the dynamics and the um, the stability of our steady state is we want to look at the poles of our transfer function. Right? So if this is a transfer function, then the poles of this transfer function, which would be the zeros of this polynomial here, the poles will tell us what the stability character is of our steady state. And so let's go ahead and look at this second order um, polynomial, this quadratic, and solve it using the quadratic formula. So in that case, what we have is our, the poles of our transfer function, or the roots of that second order polynomial. Our s is equal to the opposite of b, so minus 2 tau n, oops, 2 zeta tau n over 2a, 2 tau n squared, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 2 zeta tau n squared minus 4 times a times c. Now, c is just 1, so I'm not going to write it there. And that, of course, is also over 2a. If we can manipulate this a little bit, let's go ahead and uh, simplify it, cancel some terms. What we get is the opposite of zeta over tau n squared, sorry, over tau n, plus or minus 1 over 2 tau n squared times the square root of, I'm going to take uh, notice that this guy here, when you square it, you get a 4 tau n squared, which is also here, so I'm going to factor that out. So 4 tau n squared times what's remaining is zeta squared minus 1. So all I did was algebraically manipulate what's inside this radical here. Well, if you have a 4 tau n squared here, 
which is a factor inside the radical, then that can just come out, and what you get is 2 tau n. So I'll go ahead and do that, pull that out, and get a 2 tau n on the outside. So we have negative zeta over tau n, plus or minus. When this uh, 4 tau n squared comes out as 2 tau n, what you get here is just 1 over tau n, all times the square root of zeta squared minus 1. Uh, I guess you can simplify this one step further and make this 1 over tau n times minus zeta plus or minus the square root of zeta squared minus 1. Okay, so these are the poles of our transfer function when you have a second-order system. Now, what do you see here? The first thing that you can see is that as long as zeta is greater than zero, your system is stable. And the reason why is because if zeta is uh, less than zero, then what you have here on this side, let's say it's less than zero, but you also it's between zero and negative one, and so this becomes your imaginary part of your poles. So this is your real part, right? And so if zeta is negative, then the real part is positive. And so that's why you have your stability being determined by whether or not zeta is greater than or less than zero. Now, if zeta is even further to the left of negative one, then this becomes even more negative. Uh, sorry, this becomes uh, larger than minus zeta. And so you will have at least one positive uh, real Part. Okay, also what you'll find is that when zeta is between 0 and 1, you'll get oscillations because this guy here will give you uh, an imaginary number, and so your roots will be complex conjugates. <clears throat> and so that's why the dampening factor determines the dynamics of your system the way it does. In fact, that's why we've written your second order standard form to be in this funky form where you have tau n squared where this b term here, this, this coefficient of your first derivative, is 2 zeta tau n. And it's done that way so that this guy right here will be the thing that determines your stability, your character of, your stability character of your steady state. <clears throat>